Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. This is part three of the Country Kitchen series where I show you how to make these adorable flower sack tea towels using charm squares and our shabby shapes in monograms. Now, of course, you don't need to add the monogram if you don't want to do that, but it sure adds a cute touch. Let me show you how to get started. As I mentioned, we'll be using charm squares. Now, if that's a new term to you, all that means is a five by five inch square. Moda was the creator of really most of the pre-cuts in the quilting industry, and the five by five inch squares are what they call charm squares. Now, Moda is not the only manufacturer today of 5 by 5 inch squares. Here's a cute pack from uh, Michael Miller. I know Maywood Studios has 5 by 5 inch squares, Riley Blake as well. But today we'll be using the charm squares from the Ampleside collection um, by Brenda Riddle for Moda Fabrics. So the first thing you'll want to do is get your uh, flower sack tea towels. Now we just bought these locally. I know I've seen these at Joann's, uh, I've seen these at Target. So they, of course they come in different widths. So you can, you can either cut yours down, I think this one was actually cut down, or you can just use the size that comes in the package. The first thing you'll want to do is decide if you do want to add a monogram or maybe a different shabby shape. A hearts would be cute. You could do a, you could do a seasonal series of the flower sack tea towels with little different shapes for the different months of the year. But in this case, we we chose our monograms and we chose the letter B today. So when you get the shabby shapes, the monograms you can choose individually for whatever letter you want, you'll simply remove the backing. It has heat and bond light on the back. And they are delicate. Oh, they're just very delicate because of course the letters are very in thickness. So you'll want to decide where you want this position. Now, of course, I want mine centered on my tea towel, so I'm going to fold my towel in half. That's always my quick and easy way of finding the center of anything, really. So let's take that to our iron, and let's just put, just, we're not going real crazy with the heat. We're just trying to have a visual center that we can reference. Now, of course, half the tea towels in the front and half the tea towel is in the back. So I want to figure out where that is as well. And then if we want our letter closer to the bottom here, let's go ahead and just position it here. I like that. It's going right along our seam line. Take that to our pressing mat. It would have been best if I started with this on top of my pressing mat so that I didn't have to move it. But then again, hindsight's always 2020, isn't it? After you get done with something, you have to think, oh, I should have done that differently. This is one of, the, one of those times. So I've got that ironed down. I use a medium heat with the uh, shabby shapes for a good, I don't know, five, six, seven seconds maybe. Now I would want to, at this point, secure that edge. You will certainly be washing those tea towels and even if you don't wash them, let's say you just want them for display because they're just adorable, it's still good to secure that edge. I would take that to the sewing machine. Now my featherweight can't do a zigzag. This is a genuine 1930, late 1930s featherweight. Um, so she can't do the zigzag, but I would take it to my other machine and I actually do a nice tight satin stitch so that edge was completely enclosed. And in this particular case, I would, I would choose a cream because it's kind of that creamy buttery look. But let's say you're working with some bold colors. That's where I recommend the Masterpiece thread. These are color cards of actual thread. They're 75 gorgeous colors. They're 100% cotton. That's the other thing I love about the Masterpiece thread by Superior is that all of that thread on those cards and on your spools is 100% cotton. You're not having any man-made um, materials coming into play. It's all natural, 100% cotton, and just secure that edge. So these color cards are great to have in your sewing room when you're trying to match colors. 
So because I can't secure that edge, let's just pretend that I did. Let's pretend like I sewed that edge down. Now let's move on to the ruffle. That's my favorite part. Now again, the width of the tea towel that you buy may vary. In this particular case, these are about 17 and a half inches long. Now the rule of thumb with, with ruffles of any kind, this is true of a valance, or in this particular case, you can have anywhere from one and a half up to two times the width of whatever it is you're going to be attaching the ruffle to. So what do I mean by that? This is, let's just for round numbers call it 17. That's a lot easier than 17 and a half. Let's call it 17 inches wide. So if I want a very full ruffle, twice that would be 34 inches. I would sew enough five by five inch squares side by side to be approximately twice that uh, width, which would be 34. Now, in this particular case, I have a little bit of a looser ruffle because I want to see the fabric. I don't want it so tight that I'm really not seeing a lot of the specifics of the, of the fabric. So I like a one and a half inch. So 17, half of 17 is eight and a half. So that's 25 and a half inches. And when I sewed six of my charm squares together, I ended up with, this is about 27. That's close enough. So what you'll do when you get your charm squares is, of course, you'll just select a nice variety. Now, if you are going to actively be using this tea towel, I recommend that with each of the squares on one, one side and up above, you do a little zigzag. That just kind of secures that edge and it doesn't fray and continue to fray and fray and fray until the whole thing kind of is just a frayed mess. So we've went ahead and do, done that and it doesn't take that long. In addition, when you sew your squares together, I recommend that you come in and you go back and you reinforce that both at the beginning and the end so that when you are pulling the gathering, ruffling it, it's not starting to fall apart on you. So we've went ahead and we've sewn our six units together. The next step that you would do is you'll go ahead. Now the zigzag stitch, the zigzag edge, I'm not gonna do anything with. It's this raw edge that I would come in, turning down a quarter of an inch. All the way down and then another quarter of an inch, okay? You'll do that on the long side here, all the way down, and you'll also do that on these sides. So you'll have this one will be turned over twice, the long one that doesn't have the basting at the top, or the zigzag, excuse me, at the top, and then that. Now I've done that ahead of time, just to save us some time. So let me show you what that looks like. The other thing that I did was I put in our basting stitches. What's a basting stitch? In order to gather the fabric, we need nice long stitches so that we can pull on the threads and it begins to gather. So let's move the pressing mat out of the way. And at this point, we'll go to our tea towel. Now notice that I did two rows of basting stitches. And I talked about this a little bit in our first video in the Country Kitchen um, series where we had, again, some gathering and ruffle. I like to run two rows of basting stitches. What I find with one is I, uh, it often breaks and then everything I've been doing at that point is wasted. You have to start again. There's not really a way to remedy that. So just do yourself a favor, get very good thread. Again, Masterpiece is excellent thread. And I have really not had any breakage issues with the Masterpiece brand. Your first row of basting stitches will come in a quarter inch from the edge, and then your next row will be a quarter inch again away from that. So can you see how there's two rows here? And you'll um, leave nice long threads at the end because you'll be pulling that. So if we go back to our tea towel now, if you can envision this, the, the finished edge, of course, will be the bottom of our ruffle. So we. I can still see, I'm gonna press that again. I can still see the center. Now you've got two choices. You can press to find center, or let me show you something else that's really handy. It's called the friction pen. 
you've seen me use this in many videos. I can also just mark this like this and that center as well. If I missed it, let's say I went, oops, that's not really center. I can iron it away and it's truly gone. Isn't that cool? I just think the friction pen is one of the best inventions ever. So I'll mark that again. And of course, we know what our center is here because we have one, two, three charm packs. One, two, three. This is our center. So I'm going to put right sides to right side like this and I'm going to pin that. The reason that I'm doing that this way is I'm going to gather from this side and I'm going to gather from this side so that my ruffles are even. So let me just secure this in place and then I will show you how to draw up those strings, actually those threads, and how you, you get a ruffle even going. Okay. So you've got two threads on the top, two threads on the bottom. I want the ones that are closest to me, the ones that are up on top here. But this is going to help if I wear some glasses. I can actually see what I'm doing. So I'll grab those two threads. Okay. Now make sure you pull them together. Notice how I have them together and I kind of wrap them between my fingers. I begin to pull and I just work my, my ruffle down like this. It takes time because if you pull too hard, you will break these threads. It, it will happen. So you're just going to pull and work your way down so that the ruffle is evenly distributed. And of course, this is going to have to come to here. So all of this in here gets gathered and similarly, this will be even with this and everything in here will be gathered. So when we come back, I'm going to have this all pinned and ready to go. And then I'll show you how to actually sew the ruffle to the tea towel. So I've got my ruffle pinned to my tea towel. Look how many pins I have in there. I, um, I mentioned this again in the first video in the series, the fabric in the back, when you're attaching a ruffle can want to often creep behind. And if you have too few pins as you're sewing, you won't even notice it begin to kind of pull away and not be caught in the seams. For, so for that reason, I have lots and lots and lots of pins. So we'll now take this to the sewing machine. Remember that for our first row of basting stitches, they were a quarter inch from the raw edge. And then the next row was a quarter in inch. We're going to sew yet another quarter of an inch over. So I can either put my presser foot along the line that was that last row of basting stitches or just measure over from the raw edge three quarters of an inch. Be sure to adjust your machine for a normal stitch length now because it would have been on the basting stitch, the long stitch, to be able to do that gathering. So we'll go ahead and of course reinforce the beginning and the end. We'll stitch that and then we'll be able to turn that out and then it's very straightforward from that point. We'll press it and we'll just run some rows of um, top stitch that you can see here just to secure everything together. But let's first get that ruffle on. So I've attached the ruffle to the tea towel and I've pressed it. So isn't that just so, so cute. Now I want to mention, um, let's look at the back of this here. See this, that's a pretty big seam that you kind of don't want to be just kind of flapping there. Now I'm going to go ahead and leave the basting stitches in. Some people like to remove the basting stitches. If you were going to remove those long basting stitches, you know, you basically, I'll just do that real quick. You basically just pull them out. That's all you have to do is to pull them out. Now there's no harm. Let me just pull this one out too. It's just so you see there, there's no harm in leaving the basting stitches in. It's just further reinforcement, in my opinion, um, to leave them in. It's just more kind of skin in the game. There's more fabric holding the whole thing together, but some people don't like them. They want them gone. Just take them out. No problem. Um, now at this point, we've got this big three quarter inch seam allowance that we don't want to just be kind of flapping in the breeze, so to speak, like that. So we will, take this to the sewing machine. 
me turn it this way so you can see it more readily. I'm gonna run my presser foot right along that seam a quarter of an inch all the way down and then come back and do another row that's a quarter of an inch and you can even do maybe slightly wider if you'd like. That's what we did here to finish our tea towels. So that's all there is to making adorable custom made tea towels. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so that you can see the rest of the Country Kitchen series by Chevy Fabrics.